Hi there, this is Gary Maddox from the Sydney Morning Herald. Welcome to the 67th edition of the Sydney Film Festival, the virtual one. Uh, our guest is Marta Pulk, who's the director of A Year Full of Drama, a documentary that is quite fascinating viewing. Welcome to the festival. Hello, Gary. Nice to meet you. Yes, it's a bit of a challenge doing it virtually, but uh, I hope you do get to enjoy the Sydney Film Festival. Yeah, I hope so too. We're very happy to be included in the program and hope everybody gets to enjoy this, at least virtually. Okay. Can I start by asking how you came to this project? Um, strangely enough, I was actually uh, hired on this project by the theatre company who started the experiment. So um, there's a theatre company called Kino Theater in Estonia and they had this outrageous idea that they wanted to make a human experiment to take someone who has never been to the theatre before in their life and make them watch every single play that comes out within one country in one year and to see what happens to that person. And they brought me on as a director because the plan was to make it into a documentary. So I ended up kind of hijacking the project, I think, because uh, more than it became a film about theater, it became the story of, of Alicia, the main character. Okay. Did you have a say in selecting the person who would be the subject of this documentary? Uh, yes, I did. We held a public casting. It was actually posted uh, even on, uh, it was basically posted as a job advert because it was a job to take on a full-time job where you get paid for only watching and reviewing theater plays. So it was um, in the job agencies and so on. Um, and we had about 500 or something, 500 plus applications, um, from which 40 people we called for an interview and that's how we made the selection. But, uh, but our main character was, we had them, we had everybody send in a little video greeting saying who they are and why they've never been to the theater. And we had them listed alphabetically. And Alicia, like since her name starts with an A, she was like the third or fourth. And it was the four of us going through the videos. And as, as soon as she came up on the screen, we were all like, okay, we have like 400 more to go. But if there's anyone else in the bunch who's as good as her, then we're done. Like, um, it was a very clear choice from the beginning for all of us. Okay. Now we saw some of those other people. There were clearly some characters among them. What was it about her that made you think she was the one? I think most of all her openness, like her willingness to to take that risk and to really be sincere on in front of the camera, like or or with us, like you could straight away feel that like openness, or or she was very uninhibited, and and I felt like uh, with her background and with the way she thinks and and is able to express herself and to analyze herself, I felt like. I was just, as a human being, I was fascinated by her and I felt like if, there, if this is a story about a person and it has to go on for an hour and a half, then, then it's just, she was just charming. She has a real presence on the screen. She's almost like an actress at some stage. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it, but you could say that. You okay. could say that. She was yeah. pretty young. She was, what, 21? Uh, she had just turned 21 when we started, yeah. Okay, so what did you expect might happen over the course of the year? That's a good question. Um, I guess the biggest question in most of our heads was, will she go all the way with it? Because there was always a question of she might change her mind. She might decide that it's not worth her time, that she has some other interest and so on. Because like, when you're taking on an experiment like this, you don't really know what you're saying yes to. Um, but I think most of all to me, I kind of expected, like I saw such potential for a change in her because she was so open. And, and I really wanted to see how that process would affect her. And yeah, because there are some people who are more, more open to it, who you can see are searching. You know, they're looking, in the, they're looking at the world with a searching eye. And, and with her, that was very clear. And that's what I was expecting. How much did you expect to be able to follow her given she was going to, what was it, 224 productions all around the country? Um, I, I was very sure I'm not going to follow her to all of them. But, <laughs> but I think uh, um, it was a good opportunity to make the selections as I, like as we went along with the process, you start understanding more and more of what speaks to her, like what can be 
yeah, exactly. Like what can be influential to her? What can matter to her? Uh, but also to pick the amount of plays that are like that would represent as wide of a variety of different theater plays as possible. But also, I think a very important thing to me was how much can I follow her outside the theater? Because it's like the human being is a matchbox. I always say, like if a, if a big piece of hail falls down from the from the sky, then the only way to show how big it was is that you have to have a comparison in a way. And and to me as well, that experiment only mattered to the extent of uh, of how it changes the human, like how it how it affects the person. And the person isn't represented when she's sitting at a theater house. The person is represented in how she decides to live her life, the choices she makes, the way that her thinking like changes. And so that was the most important part to me. Yeah. She goes through different phases of responding to theater. You made the choice not to show any of her writing, any of her sort of critical responses. What was your thinking there? That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I think most of all because I like I think the film is supposed to do that job for the writing. Like she had a she had a public blog where it was possible to read her reviews, uh, but since there wasn't any chance to comment it on it, that was the one of the points of the organizers of the experiment to kind of protect her as she has to enter this new role of knowing nothing and starting to review, then I think for her, it always felt like it was kind of a place where she was screaming thoughts into the dark because there was never any feedback coming back from there. So as there was no communication on that side, I felt it's a better like opportunity for the film that I, as the viewer, am along with her for those thoughts to develop instead of just watching them on the screen. She's a young woman, a vulnerable young woman taking on a difficult job. Did you feel like as a filmmaker, you wanted to help her do her job or help her find herself? Or did you have to stand at a distance and just watch her? Mm, we, I think maybe she'll kill me when she hears this, but I think we kind of developed a strange sisterhood uh, along the process of this filmmaking because um, there's a, of course we became close from spending so much time together and, and just as a person, I see so much of, uh, of myself as well in both the story and, and in Alicia and, um, spending that much time together can kind of start blurring the lines because there were very difficult moments that we were together and, and there was some point when I remember Alicia asking like, so are you here because you're working or are you here as a friend? And I said, I don't know, but what's the difference? Like I'm here, I'm here because I care. And, and that, was, that was kind of the agreement we ended up on. That, uh, yeah, that was the trust between us. We saw her get pretty bored with some productions and clearly she didn't like some others. And she also got a bit of a talking to by the theater company at one point. Were you worried that she'd walk out and not, you know, you wouldn't have a film? Honestly, I think if she would have walked out, that would not have meant that I don't have a film. <laughs> that would have meant that the experiment is stopped. But, but I always saw the film as something that, I mean, of course, it's dependent on the experiment itself. But, but if it's an experiment, then all possible outcomes are, are acceptable. And if she decides to walk away, that also says something. That's the result of the experiment. So in that sense, I wasn't worried about it. I think as a filmmaker, you're always also thinking, like, how would this operate in a story? And I don't think it would have hurt the story at all. But uh, yeah, so it wasn't a fear. It was just one of the possible story options. OK. She obviously goes through a lot over the course of the year emotionally. Did you, how did you actually make sure you were around to follow the beats of her, of her, of change in her life. For example, when she meets somebody on the road, when there's obviously a bit of a romance, uh, when she's particularly up or particularly down. Um, <clears throat> I think a big part of it is um, luck. I think no filmmaker can underestimate the importance of luck in a way because you make certain choices and there are things you always miss and there are things for which you never expected, but that you end up being present for. But also it's most of all about the connection that, that you create with the person you're following and, and the fact that they know to call you 
and that they know to reach for, as we also included a video diary aspect of it for a smaller part that, that she knows to reach for the camera herself when something is going on. And um, I think to me over the course of those year and a half really was when we were shooting, it was about always keeping that contact of, of Alicia knowing that that we're there for her and that we're always willing to shoot and if anything important happens. And a big part of it comes from just taking initiative and keeping in touch on a daily basis and knowing what's going on in the other pe person's life, which also includes sharing some of your own. There's a dramatic moment, everybody who's watching this will have seen the film already, where she shaves her hair. She's obviously in distress. She shaves her head. She's <laughs> going through some emotional turmoil some kind of crisis. She seems to be a different person after that. Can you tell us a bit more about what that was about? It wasn't just the experiment, was it? There was a lot of things in there. There was a lot of things in there, of course. And as you saw in the film, there is um, uh, a love story that comes to an end straight or that's kind of, it marks the end of a love story. Um, but yeah, I think that shave, uh, not shaving, but the combing the dreadlocks open basically is, uh, it was a significant point and it's always fascinating to see such a visual representation of a change within within the person. And I think it, it was like all that year and a half was a big transformative process for Alicia. And as a filmmaker, you're just grateful to be around and to kind of witness it. What was the point where you saw her get a genuine interest in theatre? such that she would actually want to be a director? When was it? Mm. Or When, yeah. Um, it actually happened a lot earlier than it does in the timeline of the film. I think um, by the end of the summer, it was quite clear that things might be headed in that direction. But as, as, the, as the experiment progressed, how do I say it? We had created, the experiment had created a completely artificial um, circumstance or situation for Alicia. So what and and whatever she was thinking along the project, I felt I always had to be ready for the fact that she might change her mind because as soon as you take that infrastructure uh, of now you're going to that theater, now you're going to that theater, everything is arranged for you. If someone's expecting for you to write something, you get paid for this. Like as soon as that infrastructure is taken away, there was always a chance that that she'll go back to the interest she had before and that she had during the, the experiment as well. She was considering youth work, uh, etc. So I think to me, a big question was whether the change that has been kind of inflicted upon her is, is still there when it's completely her choice, when she's finally free of the task that she has taken upon herself and, and she's finally free to choose again and, and kind of re reconstruct her own life from pieces that she, cho she chooses to. And um, so it was there as an inkling, it was there for a very long time, but I wasn't sure it will happen until the very, very end. The, uh, the theater scene in your country is surprisingly extensive. 227 productions. Uh, was she a celebrity in the theatre scene as she went through production by production? Yeah, yeah, she was. She was, uh, like, it was a very public project because the casting was public and so on. She had the blog and and most of her, her followers who were reading the reviews were theatre people her, uh, themselves because um, one of the main things was that since she had to write the review in 24 hours after she saw a play, then it was always like very often it was the first review to come out. So everybody, everybody who was involved in productions would always turn to her blog first to see what she wrote. And I think it was very interesting for the theater scene as well to finally or or to get that opportunity to read the thoughts of, uh, of someone who's not a critic, someone who's just basically their regular audience, someone who just ends up in the hall. Like these are people whose reflections artists usually don't hear or get to see. So yeah, she was quite known in, in that circle. So a, a new reviewer following all these productions becomes a theater exercise in itself. It's a piece of theater that you're, you're filming for your documentary. What, what did the experiment show, do you think? I think most of all to me as a director, um, 
that film and that experiment and, and her progression was about understanding or reevaluating what you think is available to you in, in this world. Because coming from different places and, and feeling that we have certain limitations, um, what I loved about it was to witness the process of how, how being kind of immersed in arts or, or, and therefore different ideas and meeting people, how it can expand the world around you so, like, so greatly or, or change the idea of what you think you can achieve or what you can grasp or what you have a right to in this world. Because I think that's the biggest change that, that happened in Alicia. Mm. This is your first feature documentary. Can you tell us a bit about your background as a filmmaker? Uh, I've been making films for almost 10 years now. I started out as an editor myself. So I was an editor for other people's films, both fiction and documentary. And I started, I first started directing myself about five years ago. So I made three half hour short documentaries and one short fiction film before this. And, uh, and now I'm working on on a, another film that's uh, connected to the strange isolation situation where we found ourselves in. So, so yeah. You did have a, an adventure with a big name filmmaker, I see from your website. Uh, you mean Werner? Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was two years ago. Um, in spring of 2018, there was a Werner Herzog masterclass in the Peruvian Amazon. Uh, which collected 48 filmmakers from around the world with very different backgrounds. And we each had 10 days to develop, produce and finalize a short film, whether it be a documentary or, or fiction. And it was a very, very exciting, strange guerrilla experience in trying to operate in never before seen circumstances where nothing is under your control and trying to deliver a story. And strangely enough, that group, um, from that group, there was 48 of us and now 24 of us are working on a documentary called Tell Me because what we did when the isolation happened was that we set up um, uh, 15 different phone lines all across the world and we started collecting anonymous messages uh, from people in, of how they're feeling in isolation, what are the feelings that they can't share with anyone. So now we've, we've collected that bunch of phone calls and this will become a feature length documentary. So a strange group that came together in the jungle has, uh, has stayed on working together. I expect we'll see that in the Sydney Film Festival next year. How did you find uh, Werner Herzog himself? What was he like? Um, that's a good question. I think like he's a tour de force, like he's a force majeure as, as a director. I think you have to be to, to get this much done and to work with such range and, and and I think the biggest thing that one can learn from Werner is, is to always keep going, is to always keep going. It's like, we, we have to make a lot of compromise in how we, in, to get a film done, but it's always a question of how, how to rise above, how to always push yourself forward, never to find any excuses for yourself, and in a way, never to take no for an answer. Uh, so in that sense, as a filmmaker, I think he's terribly inspiring. Okay. We know a bit about the uh, theatre scene in your country. In fact, we know everything about the theatre scene in your country. What about the film industry? What that, what's that like? Uh, since we're a very small country, we're a country of uh, uh, 1.3 million people. The film industry is quite small, but uh, terribly, terribly passionate. So uh, I think any filmmaker in Estonia does so out of uh, out of love for the craft. Uh, I think we're about a thousand, uh, like uh, an industry of a thousand people altogether, uh, and yet somehow we're able to produce up to ten feature films a year, like uh, fiction features, more documentaries, service some uh, some foreign productions, and so on. So it's a small but a very very vibrant and a very passionate environment to work in. Is it a, an industry that has good opportunities for women? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's, um, uh, gender-wise, I think it's very equal, uh, but also I think it's very easy for 
a young person to get uh, a chance to direct and to get state support because even though our budgets are small then uh, then i think the competition is is terribly fair and always focused on the story so yeah i think it's for me for me at least it's been a perfect place to work and and to get the opportunity to direct tell us about the reaction to this film in your country it was uh, surprising, very surprising. I think um, since it was always known or publicized first as you know the theater documentary, or that's what, how it entered people's minds when we first started the project, then I think people were terribly surprised about what the story actually ended up being. Because uh, of course it's within the framework of theater, but, but it's not really a theater story. And uh, Alicia's character, I think the vulnerability that she allowed on screen um, and the intimacy that she, she was like, willing to offer the viewer, it touched so many people. So the, the reaction to her as a character and, and that chance to follow her very fragile and tender moments was something that, uh, that touched a lot of people. What about the theatre company? They the two people who spoke to her as a good cop, bad cop, didn't necessarily come across that well. They, they, you know, they were driving the project, it seemed, and maybe didn't care about her so much. What was their reaction? To the final film, you mean? Yeah. Um, well, that theatre company is also the production company of the film. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so, um, Strangely enough, I was um, I was very not surprised, but I, I'm very appreciative of the trust they gave me because what what really happened was those guys hired me to make a film. We then picked the person together, and then I kind of ran off and made a film in a year and a half because the first time they saw any of the footage, besides for some stuff we had to edit together for fundraising, was. Um, a year and a half after we started shooting. So I had a two and a half hour cut and I asked all the guys together and I said, well, here's the film. And I don't think it was what any of them were expecting because when we first started the experiment, they were thinking like, and then maybe we should have interactive maps where you see how, uh, how she's traveling across Estonia and so on. So I think they were expecting a lot more theater centered piece and that, and to them as well that, um, having spent that time with Alicia because they were involved, they were organizing her, uh, her tickets and so on. They'd been spending time with her for a year and a half, but the person they saw on screen was someone they felt they had never met to that extent or that depth. So, but being from the theater, I think they can appreciate the story and not care so much about how they come up because that's not what the experiment is about. Thank you very much for joining us at the Virtual Film Festival, Marta. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Gary, and thanks to Sydney Film Festival.